We are nothing without you. We ask for your forgiveness in every area where we have offended you. Lord, we don't want to play religion. We want to know you in the power of your resurrection and the anointing of your presence. We want to know you as Father. We want to know you as everything. Our hope is in you. Our strength is in you and our life is in you. Wash us with the blood of the Lamb. The living Christ that came from eternity into this realm. Wash us with the sacrifice of your blood. Cleanse us from our past and establish us for your glory. As we welcome the Holy Spirit to come here today. Come Holy Spirit, take your rightful place. Again, bring us to the throne room of our Father. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our heart to receive what your Spirit says today. Bring glory to the name above all names, Jesus. As we take dominion and bind every foul, unclean, seducing, hindering spirits. Every principality, power of darkness and wickedness in heavenly places and territorial spirits in this area. We bind every spirit of perversion, addiction. Every spirit of lust. Every spirit of poverty. Every spirit of fear and anxiety and stress. Every lying and seducing spirits of Antichrist in this whole area. And we pull them down in the name of Jesus. And we call forth and take dominion in the heavenlies. And we decree in this land and in this property, in this area, salvation to the lost. Visitation from the presence of the living God. We call forth a holy visitation to this area. Lord, that you draw all men unto you and everyone that steps on this property and in this memorial, veterans memorial, which will be a memorial to you. And those who come to this park will know you because of salvation and the filling of your Holy Spirit. And we promise to give you all our glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Now, Master, touch us afresh today. Touch us afresh, even now. Remove all doubt, unbelief, confusion, and fear. And touch us afresh. Surrender. Trust. Rest and wait on Him. For He's faithful to complete what He started. He's just asking for your cooperation cooperation your cooperation will bring a manifestation <laughs> oh fill us afresh here today lord fill us with your spirit that the joy of the lord be our strength and the anointing and the power and the glory of your presence and of your love break every yoke of bondage heal your people as they send your word out to each and every one here today that by the stripes of jesus you be made whole in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Lord, establish your kingdom on earth as it is in the heaven. And grant us more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to walk in the third dimension. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give God glory. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible tells us, be drunk not on wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus tells us to get drunk, man. But you know that religiosity of saying, no, you can't do that. Aren't you glad you're not religious? There's a difference between religion and freedom. And there's an area where God wants to bring us to, I'm telling you, he wants to blow your mind so that his mind can have his way. <laughs> you know, most of us have been brought up in tradition, even involved in ministries and all kinds of stuff. But those days are over with. God is doing a new thing. What he's doing is fulfilling his word. He's fill, fulfilling his prophetic word. See, now let me share with you. Right now there is a holy shift going on. Amen. And you're going to either get in it or be left in the old and be tormented. Are you listening? Because where the spirit moves, even in the Old Testament. Remember when they all encamped around the tabernacle? And by day... They saw the cloud, and by night they saw the fire, and when it moved, so did they. And that's what's going on right now. And you'll be caught up in your stinky religion if you don't move with the Spirit. 
And you'll be wondering why people are moving ahead because you're still caught in the old. I'm telling you, there's an area and an arena and a realm God is opening to his people in a mighty, mighty way. That's why he commanded to go out and lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, pray in new tongues. That's the kingdom of God, the eternal realm manifesting in the natural realm. I always tell people, man, if you're not going to a church that's not casting out devils, laying hands on the sick, moving in the gifts of the spirit, don't go. No, I'm not trying to start a church. It's got nothing to do with a church. It's got to do with a kingdom. A kingdom, a king, and his people, and his soldiers. That's what it's got to do with. You're either one of those. And what he's doing is preparing officers in the body of Christ. He's preparing soldiers. You know, right now the world is what they call in, um, you know, that, that what they call their holy war. <laughs> you know, the terrorists are doing their holy war. Jihad. Well, let me share with you. There's a war that's going to come that has already been won. And if you're not in the battle, you become a casualty because it's about battling. And even right now, the demonic forces that have been released have been released by God. See, things are getting tighter. Your fight today is easier than it was yesterday. I mean, it's, it's harder than it was yesterday. Yesterday's fight was easier than today. Your fight every day is going to get harder and harder and harder. But see, the more you stay in the spirit, the more you overcome. See, the whole thing is, is the eternal creator of all things where he has not held any space or time has come into a natural realm that's bound by space and time to bring eternity with him. Or to bring the future with him. Are you listening? See, there's a place that God wants us to walk in. To where it's no longer we that live, but him that lives. But we've got to come out of these traditional arena. We can't look at church as just being church. It's a, it's the living body of Christ. It's an organism without walls. <laughs> without a building. We are all living members of the body of Christ. And every one of us has a purpose and function to fulfill and operating in the body of Christ. So what he does first is he begins to train us. So many people want to fulfill the operation without being trained first. It won't work. One of the first things he does is after you get saved. Is he tells you about his Holy Spirit and to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit brings a different garment on you. It brings a priestly garment. And this priestly garment causes you to minister to the Lord. There are people out there trying to warfare without their priestly garments. See, your priestly garment goes underneath your armor. It's worn underneath the armor. And your priestly garments, you must fulfill your priesthood. That's why many people are out there trying to do a third floor ministry on a first floor foundation and it doesn't last. It's got nothing to do with the man. It's got to do with the anointing of God Almighty. It's got to do with your obedience and your cooperation with the Lord. But everyone in the body of Christ must fulfill their priesthood. Everybody. Because if you can't minister to, to the Lord, you got no right ministering to nobody else. And without that anointing of ministry to the Lord, which is your priesthood anointing, God doesn't allow you to minister to anybody else. That's all he'll do is let you bear, carry a bag of seeds to plant seed. Are you listening? But there's more to it. That means an individual that's not been baptized in the Holy Ghost will never cast out a devil. He'll never lay hands on the sick. He'll pray. But the kingdom of God, the eternal realm is not manifested with just word. It's manifested by the Spirit. Grab your swords, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to Revelation 19. Revelation 19. In Revelation 19 and verse 7. Is everybody there? Would you read it with me? 7 through 10. Let us be what? Glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, 
and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your what? Your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, let me explain something here. Because first of all, he says, I am your fellow servant. Now, he was an angelic being that was talking to him. He said, I'm your fellow servant and a brother. <laughs> In other words, he is a fellow servant and a brother of a prophetic people. He carrying the spirit of prophecy. In other words, these are future people connected with the future. So everybody got it. So here, John was speaking to this angel that was, he was the angel of revelation that was bringing him revelation. And, and John fell to his feet to worship. And he said, man, don't do that. I'm your servant. I'm one of the servants. I'm one of your brothers, just like you and me. In other words, you know, we're like alike, man. You're just in this realm, but I'm in the other realm. But I'm telling you, because you have Jesus, you have the testimony of Jesus that allows you to walk in another realm, which makes you a future people or people of the future. Are you all listening? That's what makes us prophetic. It's different. Go to Revelation 22. In verse 6. And then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. The Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. He sent his what? Angel. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. And he said to me, see that you do not do that. For I am your fellow servant and your brethren, the prophets, and those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. And he said to me, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is what? The time is at hand. He was unjust, let him be unjust still. He was filthy, let him be filthy still. He was righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work so again he shares with him about the angel that appears to him he falls down before him and he explains him listen i am a servant and a fellow brother does everybody get this he said the time is now by knowing let me let me share something with you by knowing the end of this age is what he's talking about the beginning of the eternal that makes us a people of the future what separates you from the world is that you know the end does everybody got it? What separates you from the world is that you know the end. That means that you are future people, but in true reality, by walking in the spirit, you're from the future into the present because the spirit has no distance, does it? We are not bound by space and time, are we? Only in this natural realm and because we're in a physical body, but in the spirit, there is no distance with christ he can take you wherever he wants you to go he can come and do anything he wants with you in the spirit but see understand that we are our future people we are not a past people that's what makes the difference between born again and saved a born again individuals of the future a saved person is still struggling in the present are you listening See, it's not only, it's, Jesus said it's not by might nor, nor, nor by power, but by my what? Spirit. By my what? Spirit. That's why Jesus commanded them to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he wanted to create a future people. Are you listening? Not just a present person, a future person. 
Oh, man, there's so much more. I'm telling you, when the Holy Spirit started revealing some of this, I'm like, man, I was blowing my socks off. I had to put them back on to play football today. (laughs) Nothing worse than playing football on bare feet. (laughs) Is everybody okay? Good. Turn your Bibles. Again, what separates us from the world is that we know the end. And what allows us to move in the future is the anointing of the Holy Spirit, which makes us a people from the future. Now, if you think about Jesus, right, he was already in the future, wasn't he? He's in the past, present and future, isn't he? So he's eternal. So if you really look at him, um, he's he came from the future. Put on flesh to come into the present. So, anybody ever hear the movie called Back to the Future? (laughs) Well, Jesus came from the future into the present to create, are you listening, a nation or a kingdom of future people. That's why you don't belong here. When you are born again, you are no longer of this realm, even though you walk in this realm. You are of the future. Why? Because you know the end. Most people are fearful, aren't they? They're afraid of dying because they, they don't, most of them don't even know what's going on. They don't know. They're caught up in today's world and, and affairs and the things of the world and financial this and all of this other stuff. And, but we're not because we're from the future. We already know the end. <laughs> we should be walking around with peace, joy, and righteousness and the Holy Ghost, casting out devils, laying hands on the sick. You know what we're doing? We're trying to rescue everyone that's bound to this world and in this time so they can come in the other time zone. Matthew 22. In verse 28, Jesus was being attacked again by the religious spirits. They were trying to trick him. And they were trying to they, t- they were telling them, they were giving them a test. They were, they were saying, hey, this woman's been married seven times, and what's going to happen to her seven husbands? Verse 28, so they said, therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of the seven will she be? <laughs> For they all had her. And Jesus answered and said to them, you idiots. No, he didn't. <laughs> you. <laughs> you are mistaken, not knowing the what? scriptures nor the power of god you're mistaken man you read them but you don't know them you don't understand them you are mistaken not knowing the scriptures nor the power of god for in the resurrection they neither marry or given in marriage but are like what angels of god in heaven But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the what? Living. In other words, he is the God of the eternal. He is the God of the people of the future. Are you listening? Where we will be like what? Angels. So that character is in you already. If you are born again by the spirit, you know, when Jesus said something to Nicodemus who snuck to him by night because he was a little freaked out. He didn't want anybody to know that he communicated with Jesus. He might have gotten thrown out of the Sanhedrin nightclub. (laughs) And lose his membership and he paid plenty of dues. And uh, so he came to Jesus and said, "Uh, I got a question for you. How you said somebody's got to be born again. How can he be born again? Man, I'm too big to go through my mother's womb. Jesus looked at him and said, Ay, yeah, yeah. And you've been studying the scriptures all this time and you preach the scriptures that I've given you, the Torah, the law, and you still don't get it. You must be born again. See, now you got to understand something. Nicodemus believed Jesus. So if you believe Jesus, you're saved, aren't you? Do you understand it? See, he followed Jesus. He, Jesus said, if you believe me, right? The word believe means to follow. So he followed him. He accepted him as his savior. He believed in Jesus. 
But Jesus still turned around and said, Nicodemus, you need to be born again. He's like, what? He says, yes, you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Anyone who's not born of the water or the spirit cannot enter or see the kingdom of God. What was he trying to do? He was trying to tell him, look at Nicodemus. I appreciate what you're doing. You're doing a good job. There's something more I got for you. Because when I die on a cross and I raise from the dead, I'm going to set up a party. I'd like you to hang around. And I'm going to throw out the greatest wine you ever had. And I'm going to pour it right on you. And it's going to cause fire to burn within you and through you and make you a citizen of the future. See, you must be born by water. Water represents accepting the seed. The word is known as water. And it also represents remission of sin through repentance. And you must be born of the spirit. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Are you getting it? That what makes you an eternal citizen of the kingdom of the living God right here on earth. And it must be established, which allows you to overcome the natural forces of the natural realm and walk in the supernatural. Hallelujah. Does everybody get it? Glory. Second Peter chapter one. See, everybody's celebrating this baby that was born. I'm celebrating the eternal that came to rescue me. <laughs> See, I've been bound in this matrix for a long time. But then he came to set me free. And gave me an eternal citizenship to walk in the power of the anointing of the spirit. In Second Peter chapter one. Is everybody there? Verse 2 through 4. Would you read it with me? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness to the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be what? Partakers of the divine nature. That divine nature is your eternal character within you. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Through lust. See, the divine nature means you're etern we are eternal people hosted by a temporary body that is sustained by his eternal truth in you. I'm going to repeat that. You're welcome. Divine nature means that you are an eternal people. People of the future. Hosted by a temporary body. This temporary body is sustained by his eternal truth in you. By you knowing the truth. Because the devil's out to what? Steal, kill, and and destroy this eternal truth is going to maintain you now truth you may know the truth but not do it so that makes it different doesn't it so that means you must use the truth and do the truth to maintain so this divine nature is always within us already that means that we are eternal beings already we are from the future in the present so everybody understand this First John three. First John chapter three. We are a prophetic people because we are a future people. That's why people think you're strange. You're peculiar. In fact, you're a little weird, you know. But that's okay. We don't belong here. You know, see how weird we really are when we get home. <laughs> First John chapter 3, start at verse 1. Behold what manner of love that the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called what? Children of God. Therefore the world does not... Ah, the world doesn't know you. See, everybody knew you when you were out there acting like the world. And as soon as you changed, which you couldn't change by yourself, 
They thought, you're weird. I remember all the people I used to hang around with, and all of a sudden they said, stay away from Guy, he's seen God. <laughs> I did. <laughs> they just thought it was some kind of joke. Yeah, man, he said he saw God. <laughs> Dude, it's weird, man. He hit too many dope, too much drinking, too much partying. Something happened to him, man. He's flipped. Stay away from him. Then everybody wants to run from you. You know why? Because you don't belong here. <laughs> Verse 2. Therefore, therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him, right? So they're not going to know you. Even your own kids are going to think you're weird. When your mothers and fathers get saved, you're out there. What sounds wrong with my parents? You know, because, you know, most of us who were in the world when uh, we were married with our kids and we used to do strange things and all, and then all of a sudden we get saved, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, begin to speak in this funny language that doesn't belong here. Hello? And all kinds of other things begin to happen. And our kids go, man, what's the matter with my mother and father? They are weird. Oh, they've gone religious. No. You're religious. They're free. <laughs> Praise God. First John chapter four. See, they think it's something that you just conjured up. They think it's something that you just decided to choose to become weird. But you couldn't help it. Verse 4. Read it with me, please. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Glory! Hallelujah! <laughs> it says this. Look at read, read verse 5. Man. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. So if they don't know you, they're not walking in the same realm. See, they can't hear you because they don't understand your language. Because you're a people from the future and they're caught up in the present. Ooh. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Oh, I want to walk with the spirit of truth. And they're walking with the spirit of error. You know, some, I mean, some of us who've worked at this place for a long time, all of a sudden we go back to, you know, we get born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. We go to one of those Friday night anointing services and our life changes. And then we go back to work and there are people around you are telling dirty jokes and you're like, no, thank you. Or they're laughing at stupid things, you know. And next thing they go, man, what's the matter with you? Well, you self-righteous thing. They start calling you self-righteousness. See, but you're not self-righteous. You're righteous. But they can't understand righteousness because they only stand, understand good and evil. Do you understand that? The world only understands good and evil. They do not understand righteousness. So they'll call you stuck up and self-righteous because you're not laughing at their nasty jokes. Or laughing at them stealing something. Or their unrighteous deeds. Because you don't belong here. Those are things of the world. And you don't belong here anymore. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Good. Let's go a little further. Uh, let's go to um, 1 John chapter 2. Verse 15. Yes. So the world doesn't know us. The world can't hear us. Right? In verse 15, what does it say? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is what? The world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides for. Oh, hallelujah. So our love is not from this realm. Our love now is from another realm. 
the eternal realm, from the creator. See, your love now comes from not a man or a woman or another human. Your love comes from God Almighty. And because your love comes from God Almighty, you no longer love the things of the world. Does everybody got it? You're separated. It separates you. Now the love of God flows through you to love one another, not because you love them, but because the divine nature that's in you, the eternal future individual, loves God's children. Second Timothy chapter 2. Remember the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The eternal became flesh. Walked among us and brought us a way of escape. See, grace is the way of escape. It's a plan. Second Timothy chapter 2. Is everybody okay? You getting it? Second Timothy chapter 2. Start at verse 1. You therefore, my son, be what? Strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. See, what we're, the, the gospel is actually a message from the future into the present. It's a message of truth. It's a way of escape from the natural realm. In verse 3, you therefore must endure hardship as a what? Good soldier of Jesus Christ. Read verse 4. No one engaged in warfare. Are we in a war? You betcha. We're still in a war. We're in a spiritual war. That means we've got to fight with spiritual weapons in the natural realm. See, the natural realm uses guns and bullets and stuff like that. We use spiritual weapons. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with what? The affairs of, the, of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a what? As a soldier. We are soldiers from the future fighting to rescue those caught up in the present. Are you listening? We are soldiers from the future to rescue those caught up in the present. Psalm 102. It's a prophetic message for a prophetic people. We've got to begin to know who we are. Verse 18, Psalm 102, verse 18. Is everybody there? Let's read it together. This will be written for the generation to come. Oh, a future generation. That the people yet to be created that's born again. May praise the Lord. Are we that generation? Yes. For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary from heaven. The Lord viewed the earth. To hear the groaning of the prisoner. To release those appointed to death. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion. And his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples are gathered together. And the kingdoms to serve the Lord the living God. Warfare. Warfare is in praise, isn't it? As you praise God, you're warfaring. Praise and worship is warfare. The Bible tells us as we praise God, he binds our enemies, brings confusion in our camps so we can have a way of escape. Warfare is praise. We warfare in this realm with eternal weapons. We must stop thinking religiously. And start thinking eternally. Does everybody get it? Again, this is what separates us from those who are saved and those who are born again. Those who are born again are baptized in the spirit. Your spirit is born again. But to cooperate and walk in that state of being, you must be filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost to be able to understand the things of the spirit realm. Or else we're stinky religion. Remember, it was a command by Jesus to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Why? And I always share with everybody, listen, when the day of Pentecost came, 10 days prior that the Lord visited his disciples, there was about 500 disciples out there. And he said to them, listen, 
I want you all to go to the upper room and hang out 10 days. All right? I don't care if you have to order pizza. Hang out there 10 days. And wait for the promise, the eternal spirit who will come and enter you and bring my divine nature. Well, 120 of them listened. Yes, they stayed there. The under 380 went out and started denominations. Hello? There are no denominations in God. There's only one body. It's a living organism. We are alive of the body of Christ. He is the head. So if he's eternal, shouldn't we be too? It says that we're blessed with every spiritual blessing. We're seated in heavenly places with Christ. The problem is, is most people don't understand the true understanding of the scriptures because without the spirit of truth and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you'll read this just like any other book without the interpretation of the spirit and we become religious. Is everybody okay? Let's go a little further. Yeah. First John chapter two. First John chapter two. In verse 18. First John chapter 2 and verse 18. Little children, it is the what? Last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, the Antichrist is the spirit of error also. He is the one. The word Christ means anointed one, the anointing. See, the religious spirit is associated with the Antichrist because he does not want people to have fellowship in the Holy Ghost. That's why Satan comes as an angel of light and he also has righteous ministers, supposedly, that are actually imparting religion to bring people to bondage instead of freedom. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, or else we walk by traditions of men and not by eternal principles. It is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist has come, and even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Why were they not of us? Amen. They didn't. They weren't in the spirit, were they? They still desired and submitted to the things that they wished to do instead of an eternal purpose and will submitting to the will of God. There's a difference. That's what separates. I'm telling you, without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you cannot walk in that realm. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be what? made manifest that none of them were of us. But you, verse 20, read it. But you have a what? Oh, hallelujah. You have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you know what? Oh, glory. That's what separates you. Because now you know all things. Why? Because the eternal spirit is in you. And because you don't belong here, you're from the future because you know all things, don't you? And because you know the end, you know the beginning, you know the Father. Hello? You're beyond salvation now. It's not just about salvation anymore. It's not about rituals. It's about walking in the Spirit, accessing the third dimension, using eternal weapons to rescue those who have been taken captive in the present realm. Because we are eternal and you know all things. Does everybody understand? Go to verse 27. What separates us is the anointing. Does it make us any better? No. It's got nothing to do with making us any better than anybody else. It's a choice that you choose. And how far you want to walk with God. Whether you want the outer court, the holy place, or the most holy place is up to you. He will not force you. But he will invite you. And I pray today that you'll be enticed to go deeper than where you've been. And if you're trying to get back to your walk to what you used to have, you won't make it. Because your walk you used to have wasn't good enough. God is doing a new thing. You'll either move with his spirit or left in the old and be tormented. Hello? Hello? In verse 27, read it with me. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need anyone teach you. Now, that doesn't mean 
that you can just, you know, oh, I know it all now. It's called pride. It's not the person that's teaching you this morning. It is the spirit that is bringing this revelation, not a person. So the anointing is our teacher, isn't he? Not the person. People don't teach people. The anointing teaches. And you're either being taught by the spirit of truth or by the spirit of error. There is no in between. But the anointing which uh, you have received from him abides in you and you do not need anything, anyone to teach you. But the same anointing that teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. In other words, in the anointing. Knowing all things and taught by the anointing to know all things. That's what separates you is the anointing. Without the anointing, we're nothing. We're nothing but stinky religion. And we don't want that. That's all you can do is carry a sack of seeds and throw salvation seeds around. Somebody be dying in front of you. You go, oh, Lord, please help this person instead of lay your hands on them. A devil will manifest in you. You'll run instead of casting them out. Why? Because those are individuals that are still caught up in this realm. They cannot see all the way through. They cannot see to the end. They don't know who they truly are. But you are eternal. You are from the future in the present because you have been taken in and possessed by the eternal spirit. You have a divine nature in you and you don't belong here. Everybody say, I'm from the future. In the present. To rescue who've been taken captive by this realm. In Jesus' name. Yes, get it in there. Romans 12. Romans 12. Verse 1. Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> acceptable to God which is your responsibility or reasonable, reasonable service it's our responsibility to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord every single day verse 2 and do not be what conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God in other words we must Think prophetic future. That must be a part of your thoughts. That you are not of this world. That everything that you see around here is temporary. That you are from the future in the present. Rescuing whomever you can to bring them home. The Bible tells us that this whole place is going to go away. Everything here is temporary. The earth, the heavenlies, everything is temporary. Or These bodies are temporary. We are eternal spirits now. We are from an eternal race. Now that we have been born again by the spirit, it, it makes you from the future. Because you know all things by the anointing. And you are here in the present and this temporary body sustained by eternal truths to keep you from submitting to the devil and the devil killing you before your time is up. I want to share something very quickly. You are servants to the anointing. Come on, write it down. You are servants to the anointing. Everyone say, I'm a servant to the anointing. I'm a steward of the mysteries of God, which is future or eternal knowledge. See, you are a steward of the mysteries of God because you maintain, because you know all things by the eternal spirit that lives in you. So you know future events and in eternal events. Does everybody get it? So we are stewards of the mysteries of God. And we are ambassadors to the eternal kingdom. Let's say it. I'm a servant to the anointing. I'm a steward to the mysteries of God. And I'm an ambassador to the eternal kingdom. Glory. You can say glory. Go ahead. <laughs> Go to Titus 
chapter 2, and we'll close here. We are prophetic people. Not pathetic. Prophetic. <laughs> but if you want to act like a carnal head, then you're, pro, then you're pathetic. <laughs> Titus chapter 2. In verse 11, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. In other words, the future access has appeared to all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify himself, his own special people. In other words, future people, eternal people. Zealous for good works. Speak these things. Exhort and rebuke with all authority and let no one despise you or cheat you or deceive you of who you are. It is our responsibility to walk in the Spirit. To be led by the Spirit. The Bible says, those who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. That means eternal, divine nature. People of the future. And as you walk in the Spirit, you will realize more and more and more that you don't belong here and that you are from the future in a present realm. Waiting to be clothed with your eternal body that will separate you forever from this realm. But right now, we're here. And we have a job to do. Remember, you don't belong here. You are a future people from the future in the present. And we must begin to start thinking that way. Everything must be thought of, of eternal, eternal, eternal. I don't belong here. Eternal. Everything is eternal in my life. Everything we do, I must be thinking about what's associating with the kingdom. What am I do to rescue? How am I going to bring individuals out from the temporary realm? I'm bringing to the eternal realm. Jesus had to die to himself. That's why he says, deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow me. It's daily that we must do this every day. Don't wake up in the morning. You know, you wake up in the morning and the first thing you hear is the voice of the stranger says, good morning. You remember what we got to do today? Hey, what about those bills? What about this? What about that? He's going to try and connect you to the natural realm as soon as you get up in the morning. That's where you must take your authority right away. That's why you must be a people of prayer. Because prayer will keep you connected to the future. And being filled with the Holy Spirit will allow the future to be present in you, knowing that you don't belong here and that you're from the future. Is everybody Okay. Do you get it? Praise God. Father, I pray an impartation today to each and every one of your word. I pray, Father, today that understanding will come, that you'll seal this seed with the blood of Christ, and that will grow and bear fruit for your glory, and that your people will know who they are in a mighty, mighty way, and that you'll grant them boldness and thirst and hunger to walk in the eternal, to walk in the future, even they are here in the present, knowing that they have a job to do and time is running out. Jesus, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah.